Hi again, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to take the opportunity to explain something very important to you, and it's the concept of responsive web design. And if you don't know what that is, responsive web design means building websites that respond accordingly, respond appropriately to accommodate different devices. These days, websites are viewed on many devices of varying widths. It used to be that we could all build our websites with one width about 900 pixels wide or whatever because we were all using desktop computers. But then came laptops and tablets and now smartphones and all kinds of devices that have to accommodate a website. And so in recent years, websites have had to become responsive. They have to respond to the device that's looking at them. And if we don't make our websites responsive or mobile friendly, we're in a lot of trouble because about half of the world or more is looking at the internet with mobile devices. Another thing that's important to know is that if you wanna compete for search engine rankings with Google, for example, your website needs to be mobile responsive. In fact, Google now looks at that as a priority, even over desktop width. So how do you make your website responsive? The method for responsive design has changed over the years. And since 90 Second Website Builder has been around for more than a decade, it's been able to evolve and keep up with all those changes. And because of that, 90 Second Website Builder gives you multiple methods for creating a responsive website. It's one of the few applications out there that allow you multiple ways of creating a responsive website. I'm gonna break these methods into two major categories. There's two techniques that you can use, and we're gonna call them this. The first method is called the breakpoint page variation method. That's the original way that responsive websites were built a few years ago. And then in more recent years, we've developed a second method that's actually more powerful, easier, and faster. We're gonna call that method the fluid container method. So if fluid containers is a better, faster way of doing it, why do we even have breakpoints and page variation method? Well, the reason is because you can also combine these methods to make a very, very powerful and more advanced web building technique, which we'll talk about later. But for the sake of clarity, let's just say there's two ways to build your website and make it responsive. I'm gonna show you the more difficult way first. It's the older way of doing it, but you can still use it. In fact, the advantage is that it gives you more control over the layout of your page and your page variations. The fluid container method, while it's easier and faster, you have less control over the layout, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. Let me at least show you both techniques. I'm not gonna go into very specific detail because there are video series just about each one of these. So this is a broad overview of the two techniques. Let's talk about the first one that I called breakpoints page variation. Here's how this works. First of all, you can see that I have a page here that is 1200 pixels wide. This is not a responsive web page yet because there's only one variation of the page. There's also nothing on it. But this page is 1200 pixels wide. I know that because I could look at my page properties by going here and clicking on page properties and it says that I'm at 1200. Another way to do that, by the way, is to right click on the canvas and go down to page properties. And we can see this is 1200 width. And you can see in the ruler, if I move the camera a little bit, you can see that the ruler ends at 1200. So this is the width of our page. Now let's say I was building a web page and I wanted a simple header. And I've got one pre-built here just for the sake of demonstration. This is a layer object I got from the toolbox over here. I took a layer, I drug it out onto the page, I made it blue, and I put an image inside of it right here. And we'll use that as sort of a logo for my website. And I have a piece of text right here. This is a text object that I put at this end of my header, this sort of banner looking web page. Now, since it's not responsive, it's not gonna look right on anything except for a desktop computer. Let me show you how that works. To look at it inside of a browser, of course, we need to preview our work. 90 Second Website Builder gives you multiple ways to do things. You can either click the preview button right here, or what I like to do is click F5 on my keyboard and bring up that preview. Now, we're not online, but we're gonna look at the website as if we were online. We're actually looking at it in my browser of choice, and it's showing us what this web page is gonna look like in a browser that's this, this wide. And if I was on a desktop, it'd look great. This 1200 pixel page looks fine because I have a wide browser. But what happens if I was looking at this website in a browser, say, the width of a laptop? Well, suddenly it's not as fine because some of my content has been cut off. If my browser was only this wide, this would be a problem. 
And in fact, if I was looking at it on maybe a tablet, now that's really a problem because now the website is not showing everything that it should. And by the time we get down to the size of maybe a smartphone, it's going to be even worse. So how do we fix that? Well, with the first method of responsive design, we do what's called page variations, and they're separated by breakpoints. Let's take a look. I'm going to click on the page menu right here in the ribbon so that we can work with our responsive design tools. Again, there's more than one way to get to these tools, but this is the easiest one for this demonstration. To create different variations of the same page, what I have to do is add breakpoints to this page. Right now, my default size, which is always the largest size, is 1200. But let's say I wanted to make a page variation that accommodated laptops. So let's add a breakpoint. Now, most laptops are going to be somewhere around 800 or 768 pixels. We can choose any one of these or multiples of these, and we can even type in our own number. But for now, let's pick 768. It's pretty common. Now I have a page variation of the same page. You can see that the ruler has adjusted. I actually have two page variations, the 768, which is shown right here. And also, if I click this, it will toggle back to the 1200. I have the same page, the same objects, but two versions of this page, two varying widths. However, in order for this to look right, I need to make this fit my 768 breakpoint. To do that, we need to move everything over. So now I can put this inside here. I can bring the layer up to 768. And now I have a version of the page that will look good at 768 pixels. And I also have, I'll click this to toggle it, a version of the page at 1200. I didn't have to create new objects. I just needed to change their location and sometimes their dimension. They're actually, it's actually the same object on the page, just in a different location on the page. And if I wanted to make a smaller one like the 320, I would do the same. I'd add a breakpoint at 320. And now we have one here. And this is where it gets very interesting because since I'm using a very small breakpoint, I got to fit a lot of information in this. That means I may have to shrink this down a little bit to a smaller size and maybe move this text in to a smaller size. Something like this. So that when we look at this on a smartphone, it's going to fit. So let's bring this into here. And now I've got the layer stopping at 320. Three variations of the same page. The 320, the 768, and the 1200. Now when we preview, we can see that whatever width my website is at, we're going to be able to accommodate that device, whether it's 1200 or whether it's something as small as a 320 pixel smartphone. Just by changing the width, we are making a website that responds accordingly and appropriately to the device that's viewing it. That is sort of a quick, in a nutshell version of the breakpoint page variation method of responsive design. And you can see that I had to do a little bit of work. I had to not only design my header to look the way I wanted it to look, but I had to also then redesign it to fit this and then redesign it again to fit this. The good news is I'm working with the same objects in most cases. All I have to do is adjust them slightly to the left, maybe change their dimensions, and you can see that it works just fine. You'll notice that this object, even though it's small in this variation of the page, it can be larger in this variation of the page. And that's totally fine. It's still the same image. And that's where the software is powerful. It allows you to share the same objects across varying page breakpoints without duplicating them. All you're doing is changing their dimensions or their location on the page. So I told you I was going to show you two methods. That's a general concept of the breakpoint page variation method. And I have a series of videos that talk about just using that method, some of the quirks about it, some of the ins and outs, some of the things you can and can't and should and shouldn't do when you're using this method. Now let's quickly talk about the other method called fluid containers. This has become quickly my favorite way to build a responsive website. And you'll see that many of my templates now are using the fluid container method because this is really a more up-to-date way of building a website. Now, to understand the fluid container method, and again, this will just be an overview, otherwise the video will be too long. You're going to have to understand something about 
three very important tools, probably the most important tools in the toolbox when you use this method. The first thing is you won't need breakpoints and page variations necessarily. So we'll start with none. I'm going to go back to the page menu and go back to managing my breakpoints. And I'm just going to remove them all because we won't need them for this. Now I'm back to just a 1200 pixel page width. You can see right here, no variations, just one page width. But by using the right tools, these objects, which are containers, will make those responsive and mobile friendly adjustments for me because of the nature of how they work. The most important one, the first one is something called the layout grid. I'm going to drag it out onto the page and I want you to see what happens. You'll notice that a little box snapped up to the top of the page. And this is one of the things you need to know when you're working with these objects, they always snap up to the next position. And you might think, wow, I don't like that. I like the layer tool where I could drag a layer out and put it wherever I want. Well, that's true. You can put a layer object wherever you want, but it's not going to automatically respond unless you make page variations. So one of the things you want to learn how to do is work with the layout grid and sort of obey its commands for lack of a better phrase. A layout grid is basically a row, a container. And when you really build a professional website, you want to think about your website in terms of rows, actually blocks is what we call them. Blocks or containers of content. You might have a header and a footer and a content area and a form area. And all these things basically are made up of containers such as the layout grid. And the layout grid can have as many as 12 columns or one column or any number in between. If I remove this, you can see we have a full one column container. We double click on it. We can add dividers like this and have as many as 12. Go like this. And now we're working within these cells and this row. This is where we put our content. Let's get rid of some of these because that's a little excessive. Now I have two and I can also adjust them this way. This time I'm going to make the header with a layout grid. So we'll double click on it. And I'll make the style be blue like my other one. We'll make it a solid sort of blue color. And now I'm going to put my um, image inside this container. Now watch what happens when I drag this. It's going to be able to help me. It stretches to accommodate that. I've put it in this cell. And then I'm going to put the text object that I had over in this cell. And it will snap into place. Notice that I'm not putting it just in any absolute position. They snap into position. Now let's take a look and see at the very basic what just happened. First of all, all I did was put in a layout grid and I put my two objects on the page and now we're ready to go. Now if we preview this, I want you to see what the layout grid is doing for me. Even though I didn't make any page variations, it's going to make all these adjustments for me. No matter how wide or how narrow I make this page, the layout grid is making these adjustments for me. And that's the advantage of doing that. I don't have to make different page variations. Now you might be saying, yeah, but one thing I don't like is the way this is hugging the edge. When I could put objects wherever I wanted them, I had more control. Well, you still have some control. You just have to look at it differently. So for example, a layout grid allows us to adjust its padding. I can make some padding here at the top. Let's put about 20 pixels at the top, 20 at the bottom. And you can see that we can have the kind of border that we're expecting. And again, we'll preview, and there we have a beautiful, responsive page. Obviously, there's a lot more to it as your page gets built out because you can put a lot of objects on your page, and there are video series just about using these tools. The other tool you're going to want to know about, which is similar, is the Flex Container. It's very similar, but works a little bit differently, and you should watch the video about that but it also snaps into place. The other thing is you can use a layer also with the this method of design, but what you want to do is you want to change this layers mode. You double click on it and you change it to a floating layer because in technical terms, that's what these containers are doing. They're floating. That means they snap into position. Now, if I really like the way a layer works, I can use the layer and see it snaps into position to also put my objects in just like this. And you can see that that's going to work just fine. 
Let's make the background of this a solid blue. Let's put some text here. And now I'm using a layer, but it's going to work as a floating layer and work very similar to these other fluid containers. The other thing you should know is in the uh, blocks palette, which there's a video about down here below, there's a blocks palette. There's a whole series of pre-designed blocks that you can use sort of as templates or mini templates. They're just pre-designed areas of your website. Almost all of these blocks are built with layout grids, flex containers, floating layers, and these kinds of fluid containers. Almost all of them are built with these kinds of objects. So it's really becoming the norm and the easiest way to build your websites. Of course, there's a video just about blocks. But in this video, I just wanted to cover those two concepts so that you have an idea when we talk about breakpoints and page variations, you know that we're talking about a specific technique for responsive design. And when we're using things like layout grids and other fluid containers, now you can see why, because it's a great way to build your responsive, mobile-friendly website with 90 Second Website Builder.